All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. Thanks for supporting the channel. Lots of new patrons. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess enjoying some of the rants that I do, which I really thought, you know, that was going to be more harmful. So I would be what harmful Dave instead of harmless Dave. But here I am and uh, thanking those of you who have decided to come on board and support the channel. That is much appreciated. Speaking of something that probably isn't appreciated, broken ribs, broken ribs. I was going to say barbecued ribs, but no, broken ribs. We're talking about Vince Neil from Motley Crue, who fell off a stage at a concert in Tennessee last Friday night. So uh, Vince Neil suffered broken ribs after falling off the stage. That's what his guitarist told the crowd in a video, which was then circulated widely on social media. In the video footage, you can see Neil clapping at the edge of the stage with his guitar strapped around him. By the way, I didn't know that um, Vince Neil played guitar. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I, I guess all these guys know how to play their instruments a little bit, but I didn't know that Vince really played uh, and you know, he should probably just focus maybe on just being that front man and let someone else play guitar. Anyway, uh, he can be seen clapping at the edge of the stage uh, right before he fell. Supposedly, there was a, a gap in the stage, like, I don't know, yay big. It's probably a little bit bigger. Um, anyway, his guitar player told the crowd uh, that Neil's injury was fairly serious and that he did have broken ribs. Um, of course, he wasn't playing with Motley Crue. He was just playing in his own band. If you remember, uh, Vince Neil briefly went solo, and every so often he goes solo. But I remember when Motley Crue broke up, he went solo, and he had, I think, one album that did fairly well after he went solo, and of course, trying to sound just like Motley Crue. Now, here's a deal about uh, Vince Neil. Vince Neil has had a few false starts. Uh, his health has been a question. Uh, his physical condition has been an issue. And also, essentially, I think a carrot was put out there that if Vince Neil could get in really good physical shape, this big arena tour was supposed to happen with Def Leppard, Joan Jett, and Poison, along with Motley Crue. And it's been canceled now two years in a row because of the thing that continues to hamper large events. Now, they probably could book a few stadiums. The problem is they can't book enough stadiums to make a profit. They would have to go to those states that don't have heavy restrictions. And that's really going to hamper their ability to make the kind of money to pay everybody and to have a successful tour. Now, it's been really difficult for Vince Neil to get into shape. He's in slightly better shape than he was a couple of years ago. Uh, watching him on stage, he certainly seems more active. His singing has also been an issue where I think a couple of months ago, his voice just completely cut out during a performance, and it was really a big failure. I think he had to leave and then the concert was over at that point. So those people who paid money for those tickets were probably a little bit bummed out, not sure if they got refunds or not. But this is, this is something that guys like Eddie Trunk and a few other commentators, they don't really talk too much about. And that's the entire uh, aging and mortality, which I bring up quite a bit, because what I've noticed is that these rock stars tend to think that they can do what they did 30 or 40 years ago. And unless you're like Mickey Thomas, most of them can't do it, all right? And if they do it like at 50% or 70%, whatever, I would say even lower than that sometimes, people just ignore the fact that they're older and they don't sound anything like they used to sound. Now, to Vince's credit, <laughs> prior to this accident, he was singing pretty well. I was listening to him and going, okay, yeah, this is plausible. 
Um, but these are difficult songs to sing. This is a hard catalog to sing every night. Um, and I think they're putting everything in the original key. And there's a speed to all these Motley Crue songs, Kickstart My Heart or uh, Dr. Feel Good. You think it's like, it's, it's a very gallopy, very fast paced kind of um, catalog other than maybe what, Home Sweet Home. But most of it, you know, <laughs> it's just pretty, pretty rocking, pretty fast, pretty loud. One of my favorite Motley Crue songs, I don't know if they still do it, is The Looks That Kill, which is from one of their earlier records, which that's when they were very hardcore and you weren't sure uh, which direction they would go. Like a lot of these metal bands, they, they wanted some female fans, so they started writing ballads in addition to all these really hard rock and songs. They took their cues from bands like Journey and REO Speedwagon, thinking, hey, especially with Motley Crue, who these days are being accused of all kinds of evil things because of what they did back in the 1980s and early 90s. Um, yeah, um, their behavior was rather despicable. And I hate to say it was kind of normal. And normal doesn't mean it's necessarily good, but um, they were basically operating within the context of what music was in those days. Of course, the 90s would break up all that stuff, at least on the outside. I'm sure a lot of that stuff still went on kind of behind closed doors and on the inside. And, you know, the drug use and the substance abuse never really curtailed from, from one era to another era. But in the case of Motley Crue and Vince Neil, might it be time to put this to bed? I mean, they had that movie, right? And they were trying to capitalize on the movie that came out, the documentary, um, The Dirt. And that's a scary Thing to watch and I watched it and I was just you know they they totally uh went for an authentic story and for somebody who at my age it's just stuff I really don't want to know at this point or it just didn't really hit me in a way that was positive I felt like this was just the most debauched band uh on planet earth and they wanted you to feel that way they wanted it to be salacious but anyway they're coming off this movie and they're supposed to do this big tour, and they probably would have done really well. And I even said a couple of years ago, if that had gone off, that would have been a little mini rock and roll revival. That would have inspired older bands to get back into this, to take it more seriously, that if you book the right artists together, you package it the right way, you can make lots of money doing this again. And you still possibly could if you had a healthy... Vince Neil, who didn't have broken ribs, um, who wasn't prone to have his voice cut out. I mean, he's 60 years old. There are guys that are older who are still trying to do this with varying degrees of success with it. With Vince Neil, I mean, one, it's, it's kind of like um, Stephen Piercy from Rat. It varies from night to night. Some nights you're like, wow, he's not bad. You know, he pulled that off. And other nights you're like, nothing like what he used to be. Uh, it's so far removed from what he used to sound like and what he used to be that it's cartoonish. It's, it's like somebody who gets up there and you're supposed to ignore all the flaws and just pretend it's like 1991 again. And for me, I don't do that. It's really hard for me to do that. I'm basically of the impression that if you're no longer able to put out a decent product, uh, with the band members that you have, then either you shut, shut the thing down or you recruit somebody in those positions who can do it. And even though I don't like bands that don't have original members, I'm starting to see why it's an option because the founding members of the band are going to say, this stinks. This doesn't sound anything like the way we used to sound. And people hear these songs on the radio still. And they want to have a reasonable correlation between the live performance and what they've known from the radio. And it tends to get further and further from that where they tune things way down. And it just, it, it's, it's sad. Mortality is sad. And uh, aging is sad. And these guys 
I don't think they could have ever imagined back in 1990 that they'd still be kicking around in 2021 trying to pull this stuff off because it's really difficult, but it can be very lucrative. And I think Vince Neal might be all done. Broken ribs. Um, you know, I know you've got the arena tour next year. They're supposed to try it again. My hunch is the same problems will be here next year. And playing large stadiums is going to be very difficult to orchestrate all around the country. You might be able to do it in some of the southern states that have fewer restrictions. You probably don't want to take this through the Midwest or the Northeast or the West Coast. So that's going to limit where you can sell this tour. And you need big stadiums in order to, to earn revenue and make a profit, basically. If you want to break even, you could probably tone it down and do smaller venues. But um, you got, what, three or four bands here that need to get paid, including Def Leppard. I mean, Motley, I would probably put Def Leppard at the top of this ticket, not Motley Crue. Um, but there may be no ticket. Or maybe... Motley Crue will start um, harassing John Karabi again. <laughs> or the fans will say John, and John will get really mad at the fans for talking about him again. I mean, he went off on everybody, including the fans, including Motley Crue, um, a few weeks ago when it was rumored after Vince's voice cut out for one performance that, hey, it's a rumor that John Karabi is going to come back to Motley Crue. And John just gave everybody the middle digit and said, no, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Of course, he said it in a more colorful way. So in any event, you got to wonder if this is Vince Neal's last go round. Um, is this it? It could be. I mean, breaking ribs, uh, that takes a while to heal. At one point, um, after he fell, apparently he couldn't breathe. So... <clears throat> You got to hope and pray that he's okay and he's just going to make a recovery and maybe let's not worry about if he's going to tour anymore or if the stadium tour is going to go off next year. But if I'm Motley Crue, if I'm seriously, I know they probably can't get John Karabi to come back, but maybe you need to start thinking about somebody else at this stage if you want to continue the franchise. I mean, you got the other guys in the group that are that have been around for a while, and maybe you could, you know, not have Vince up there. It's tough because he's such a, you know, icon as a front man, and I don't know if you replace that. But like I say, the, the aging process and mortality, those are facts of life. And I think the rock world has to come to terms with that. Uh, rock and roll. It's not the fountain of youth like we all thought it would be. It's just another profession where people grow old. And unfortunately, they don't live forever. And that aging process sometimes is not pretty to watch. And anyway, that's kind of my video here. Um, of course, wishing Vince Neal a full recovery. And uh, hopefully this isn't the last of Vince Neal. But honestly, it, it really could be at this stage.